Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video, we're going to be looking at dichotomous keys. So firstly, we're going to recap what we understand by classification. We're going to look at what we mean by structural features of living things. We're then going to introduce what we mean by a dichotomous key, including different types and examples. So what do we mean by classification? Well, we've looked at this concept in the past. The idea of sorting things into groups, particularly we're focusing on living things or organisms. So trying to find order and meaning and organization systems to understand the, the broad range of living things that we encounter. So looking at kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species, this kind of these different levels of organization and kind of boxes to put things in based on their features. And we're looking at similarities and differences to help us to decide how we are going to organize them. What sort of groups are we going to use? Um, and so then we need a way to be able to communicate with others about how to tell these different organisms apart, how to um, look at a group of things and be able to, um, to, to use their differences to help tell them apart. Um, but it's important that when we're looking at living things that we focus on what we call structural features to help tell them apart. Because um, the, if we pick the wrong features, then it starts to get too vague. Or maybe it's too subjective, it's too um, up to an individual, individual person's understanding of that word or that concept to be able to describe living things. And then we'd end up kind of ruining our system because um, it wouldn't be consistent or it would be, um, you know, I might establish it one way and someone else might do it a different way. We can't um, be communicating about the same thing effectively. So some of the structural features we might use you know, things to do with the, the way that the body is put together. So maybe the number of legs, maybe whether things have got wings or no wings, how many sets of wings, where are they? How many body segments are, are we talking about? Especially when we think about insects, for example, versus humans versus you name it. You know, the, the presence or absence of a skeleton, is it internal or is it external? You know, like a crab might have versus say us as human beings with an internal skeleton. Okay, the idea is that these are features that don't change over the lifetime of the organism. So, for example, things like hair color, things like, you know, so color and shape and size um, can be vague and also can change. Um, you know, lots of different things, different living things will change color over time um, as they grow from, um, you know, being young to being older. Um, or, you know, as they grow that their size will change. So things like that can be very um, problematic to use. So we try to pick features that are objective, that are consistent and don't change as the living thing gets older we can use dichotomous keys as a way to help to classify or distinguish between living things. Okay, so the idea is that um, we're classifying organisms using this kind of a key, um, but so we're presenting it as a, a, a diagram or a system where we have two choices. Um, we, have, we have two choices at each kind of stage and then we, you know, different answers. And whether we answer one way or the other way, then we, we start to sort um, based on those characteristics. So dichotomous is Greek for cutting in two. Um, and so if we look at this example here, you know, at each point that we've got uh, an option or a question, um, and then it splits in two at different stages. And as we go further and further down the diagram that we end up separating or distinguishing all these things from each other. Okay, so there's three kind of main types of dichotomous keys that we want to be familiar with. The first one, and the, probably the most common we will encounter, is called a branched dichotomous key, like you can see here. And the previous example looks the same, uh, like it is of the same type. So what we can see is that we have physical kind of line branches drawn where it splits into two. So each, you know, we have, um, so these choices are written as branches. We've got um, two different branches or two different options at each branch. Okay, and so then we, you know, we've got what these answers are or what these options are. And eventually, once we get down to um, something unique or we, we've kind of identified a particular living thing, then that's where we would write its name. So does it have wings or no wings? If it has wings, we're talking about pterosaurs. But if it has no wings, well, then we need further things to, to distinguish them. If it has bony plates on its back, we're talking stegosaurus, etc., etc. So we start at our top, the top and work our way down towards the bottom, you know, kind of following more and more choices as we need to to distinguish the living things. But each answer is one branch. And we have two branches at a particular point. That's the idea. The second type to be familiar with is called tabula, or you know, using a table structure. Okay, so if we're looking at these these dinosaurs, the same sort of set as before, you know, so we have choices written as rows in a table. 
you know, and we've got this option or that option. If it's we, we distinguish that thing, it has its name, or we go to the next option where it'll tell us which number to go to, which step to go to. So we follow our way down the table until we get to individual living things, moving those different rows depending on our choices. And the last one, and probably the one we will use the least, but it is important to be able to recognize it is called a circular dichotomous key. So where we're starting in the center of a circle, and then we've got two options, and then we're working our way out towards the edge to identify a particular living thing. So starting with farm animals, does it have four legs or not? And then moving out two options, two options, and you know, all things to confirm um, what those living things are. Okay, so we've I reminded ourselves about what we mean by classification, sorting living things into groups based on similarities and differences. And it's important that we pick structural features that don't change over the life of the organism so that then we can have an objective, consistent system. Um, using a dichotomous key in order to actually kind of visualize it, a diagram to draw that come, these come in three types, branched, tabular, and circular. All right, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye for now.